time, if you were comparing people that were at different ages all at the same point in time, because you didn't really know if the 18 year olds were getting worse or if there was just like an age difference. And it was also at a point in time where um, it was also fairly obvious that people, the later you were in the 20th century, the more years of education people had. Is this Shea or Warren that you're talking about who discovered the Warner oh, effect? His name is Warner Shy. Oh. Warner's his name. Uh, it's actually his middle name. Sorry. I thought Warner, I'm, no, it's my yeah. mistake. Okay. K. Warner Shaw is first in the yeah, class, but he, he goes by the name. Um, and if you, go, if you go to GSA sometime, you can see him. He's retired now from Penn State. He's, he's now living in Seattle with a study. He and Sherry are still, um, still working on it. Um, and he's one of the editors of the handbook of psychology. Um, so this is a um, this is a diagram of a, actually a somewhat extreme version of the fluid and crystallized intelligence notion, but this is just suggesting that if you, if you take the test together, you can end up with a fairly flat line longitudinally. But if you look at crystallized intelligence, at least from, oh, like your preteen years up until middle age, you have Fairly steep increases in crystal intelligence, and at the same time, your fluid intelligence is looking at the air to be This is just giving you a reminder of what we're talking about. Verbal meaning questions of this form, which you've all seen through your educational lives until you're sick of it, and which of these is a synonym for that. Spatial uh, ability or spatial rotation, which of these is this one turned around? Oh, turned around? Yeah. <laughs> I know it's A, but I hate these kind of things. Well, it depends on what you yeah. do. Yeah. Right. Turn turn around. You, have to, you have to rotate it on its. Don't make it crazy. <laughs> clockwise or counterclockwise? <laughs> okay, you can work on that one. Look at reasoning is like what comes next to this D E Y, F G Y, H I Y, J K Y. What's the next one? L L L. <laughs> Number is right. is this correct? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. You mean the addition? Yep. You've got the, you got the answer. You just respond right or wrong. Mm -hmm. And then word fluency is how many words can you write? Which we have to let it yes. So these these are the and these are uh, sample items from the five most commonly used factors of primary mental abilities test, which is what it's a Gilford didn't it? It's Thurston is a factor analysis guy. It's Gilford's the one that's here at MSC. Um, that make up the, 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 uh, the test that's used most commonly in the Seattle Longitudinal Study of the Child's is that what on the syllabus when it says PMAT, that's primary mental ability? Primary mental ability. Okay. I'll come back to that.
These are some um, theoretical figures that, that I've been fooling around with uh, lately. And the main thing is the kind, you see that the, the elements are sort of similar, and he's just trying to make some points about in the contrast between this slide and the next one, of where he thinks the uh, connections are stronger in young adulthood and midlife, and whether, and whether they're stronger in the latter half of life. And so neurobiological influences, so different kinds of biomarkers, as well as chronic disease. And so early on, he's suggesting that the biomarkers might have some influence on particularly fluid abilities individual change, um, but that you, that you uh, wouldn't expect chronic disease just because there isn't so much chronic disease in the young adult and midlife population. Social-cultural influences are the accumulated resources and concurrent activities. This is just the fear of the accumulated resources for education that has the most influence in primarily on crystallized abilities. And then the second part of life, you've got the same factors we suggested that here it would be chronic diseases that would have more of an influence in this phase of life, and that it might be concurrent activities rather than accumulated resources, although accumulated resources will affect concurrent activities and push more and more physical chronic disease. And still indirect. As we'll talk about next week and the whole use of the music, and I'd probably be inclined to put less of some kind of activity. Still, there's your heart issue. Okay. Then cross sectional graphs, but these are from the Seattle Longitudinal Studies, or the five new abilities. And they're actually divided up. These are across. They're organized by age, and there's a cross-section of differences at two different points in time. And again, part of what he wants to do here is to show you that, as actually Zelensky and Kennison do in, the, in a different way, uh, in the paper, looking at the David Kohler effect, is it? just looking at something um, 28 years later, you can see that for the most part, a lot of abilities people are starting at a higher level. So. Circle reasoning, even the 25-year-olds have all gone up at a higher level than 25-year-olds there. Um, spatial ability is the same thing. Word fluency has gone up quite a bit for 25-year-olds. Um, what's the square? The verbal meaning hasn't changed quite so much. And, um, Triangle them. Not too surprising. Yeah, because you know there's automated cash registers in the old days and they're calculated. <coughs> you didn't you can't do it in your head. That's what I'm Makes you feel better? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> the people like look like now when you get changed, the person has to look at the cash register and can't calculate it in so his or her head. Easier, <laughs> But it's it's the cash and, and the cohorts. Until, 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 the, until the computer goes down, I think yeah. they can do it. Yeah. The cohorts are really interesting, though, because if you look at the 25 year old in 1970, that would be the 53 year old in 1998. Mm -hmm. And the scores aren't all that different for mm -hmm. most of them. They're really pretty much in the same group. So it's almost like kids are getting smarter. I mean, they're really, I mean, they're ballpark. You're looking at the, you said the 25 year old in 1970 and the 53 year old in 1998. Yeah, I mean, it's not a huge, huge difference. That's almost like a cohort effect that younger kids are maybe exposed to that more, so they're naturally more inclined to. Excel the test. It's also, if you just, I mean, it's something like you kind of don't want to do, but also, you know, just a different way of thinking about what we were just talking about, how you discovered this stuff is if you look here, things are both kind of 